cloud. Welcome. It is Doc's Office Hours. It's November the 2nd. A reminder that we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. Be nice to each other. So proposed agenda topics. Uh, one of the gaps I'm seeing is adding more copy editors. Review the change log. Hacktoberfest results, security restructuring, and adopt a plugin tutorial. Any other topics that need to be on our list for today? One quick one. What happens with the time of this meeting next week? I believe the United States goes off daylight savings time on Sunday. Oh, okay. good question. Okay, so let's put meeting time and the evils of... <laughs> of um, Na national modifications of time okay very good all right okay good so we we will let that's a good topic what other topics if we get through all of this we'll come up with some other stuff okay cool all right so um let's take the evils of national modifications of time first i live near boulder colorado where the um, atomic clocks are maintained for the United States by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. We should stop modifying clocks. Um, <laughs> the usual pattern here is meeting time continues to be UTC based. So, so if we need to change it, let's agree to change it to a different UTC time, but for right now, it is scheduled next week. It will be at, it will be one hour earlier next week. Is that workable for, I, I think that's no change for Diraj because I think they don't meddle with clocks in India. I think you're right. I think they're sane. Is that okay for you, Meg? Or would you that rather be one hour later? Kristen, is it's cool. this one hour earlier a week from now when, when the country messes with the clocks is yeah. okay? <laughs> yeah, that works for me. Okay, so, all right, thus we'll be one hour earlier next week. Okay, uh, local time. And please stop messing with clocks. <laughs> uh, I've threatened to move to Arizona. My wife is from Arizona. I have citizenships there if you wish it, but it's, it's blooming hot in Arizona and my kids are in Colorado, so. I agree on the heat. <laughs> it's very hot down there. <laughs> and yeah. having lived there for many years, that's the least of its problems. Oh, no, no, no. And Come I on. hate heat. I love I love Sholo area and the, the White Mountains are beautiful. But That's but true. It's a different, even so, my kids are still in, in Colorado. Right. All right. So um, end of plea about clocks. Uh, are there, let's see, adding more copy editors is definitely one I want to discuss with the two of you and, and see your, your sense of it, et cetera. So right now we're shorthanded. We have- How do we two, do that? We, we ask for permission and then we grant you permission if, it's, if uh, the community discussion accepts that it would be allowed. Okay. okay. The question is, are, are for to each of you as individuals, are you interested in this additional role? Um, do you have capacity to do anything with it? Um, right now we've got um, Oleg who is heavy loaded, Rick who's not, not involved hardly at all, Tim who's involved and I'm involved. So we've got two and a half involved, if you will. <laughs> and And I think we need more bodies just to schedule the, to spread the load more. I've got time now, but I don't know what my future is. So, right. so what would we need to do for, or wait, maybe it's like, what is the responsibility of being a copy editor? Good, this is also good. a good thing for the recording. <laughs> so. Right, right. So a, a copy editor, a copy editor is a reviewer and an editor of content for the Jenkins.io site. So they operate against three repositories. The plugin Wikidocs repository, largely nothing to do there. The Jenkins.io repository, lots to do there that happens and needs review, et cetera. So blog posts, um, updates to documentation, et cetera. And then the IEP repository is largely unused. It's, it's for infrastructure enhancement proposals. 
So your the primary role is to review pull requests and merge them uh, after they've passed review for Jenkins.io. Now the danger there is that there's a, a certain level of experience required that some of the things we want to be careful before we merge, others we have to ask permission. So for instance, changes in the security area should always be reviewed by security people, uh, that kind of thing. Right, and that's, I mean, copy editor traditionally is just, you know, spelling and grammar and adherence to style. Right, and that's and this this copy editor role is a misnomer in that sense because it's much more than that. Uh huh. Right, and I'm not you. Uh, well, and and and, but I think that's okay. If just having extra reviewers is a real positive, for instance, I just posted I posted a blog post yesterday, and now 24 hours later, it's not been reviewed yet, and it's one of those that needs that's sort of time sensitive. I reviewed it and left you one comment last night or early this morning. Yeah, I, I guess I should say differently. It's not been reviewed by anybody who's, whose review would authorize me to merge it. Right. <laughs> and, and that's a, I, I understand. I mean, with only four, four reviewers, right? With only four copy editors right now, that I think is just too few. So to, to I guess let's go, Kristen, are you okay if I propose that you be added as a copy editor or would you, would you rather not? I, I can do it. I just, it's finding time. Um, well, and, and, and that's, a, yeah. <laughs> I think I'll be, I hope I'm having some more time come up, um, but who knows, <laughs> um, but I can definitely take some time and even, I guess, reviewing a few pull requests would be helpful as long as that's good for yeah, and th actually, that that would be more than good enough okay. if you can if you can add twenty minutes a week. That's okay. twenty minutes we don't have right, right. now, right? So that's a good, so that's that's, a good point. that's already a dramatic improvement over what what we're getting now. Um, so okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put as a yes. As always, it's no, no, yes, and. We understand you. If this is not a commitment. This is not a guarantee. Anything like that. It's you're willing if your time allows, if your personal right. schedule allows. Um, could I be a like a silent apprentice or something, Mark? I could read over them and at least flag things that I thought you needed to check. Uh, sure. Yeah, that would be fine. Yeah. You know, so maybe make you more efficient. I just get you know. I'm willing to do a lot of stuff if I know there's somebody who knows what they're talking about who's going to come along and check what I said. Good. Okay. So consider um, copy editor in the future. Right. After mentoring that. Yeah, that sounds fine. I think that's great because then what that says is we, we take, give it a period of a few months of, Hey, we're going to mentor mentor Meg for a period of a few months at, uh, proposing Kristen be added because Kristen, yes. you've got enough experience to say yes, yes and no. And you're, conservative enough in terms of what you'll what you'll actually merge that I'm not worried. Yeah. <laughs> like it probably wouldn't be, you know, still kind of making sure that for a while I'd appreciate the double checking just to make sure what I'm saying is correct. But yeah, yeah. Well and 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 that's becoming a copy editor is certainly no no commitment that you will merge things. Okay. Yeah. That's if you're not comfortable merging it or you want additional consult, you you certainly don't have to merge it. But there is a, this is a thought too, we could try out this model. There may be other people out there like me who are willing to do it, but are not qualified to actually make the final judgment, but they could still save some time for you and Oleg and, you know, people who know, who really know this stuff and Kristen for that matter. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, right. Go ahead, Kristen, excuse me. Yeah. No, right. Yeah, it sounds like even just kind of reviewing it to ask the right questions to bring your attention to something that we might we might not be confident, like Meg and I might not be able to confidently say is the right action might help speed up, be a better use of your time too. Right. That way Good. you can look at something very... Because something that I'm finding just in the various things I'm doing is a lot of times there is another piece of documentation that's referenced from something that sounds like mm -hmm. the right title, but you go and look at that and that's a mess. 
Um, or this piece you're reviewing is actually in conflict with what's in the other piece of documentation. And that takes time to read. And I can at least look and say, these can't both be true. I cannot judge which is the correct one. Right, I like that. Well, and, and truly that kind of analysis, that type of analysis is quite helpful, right? It's that's defensive work that others of us should do and far too often may not do in the rush to get something merged and you're There's doing it. There's too few people a, working on all this stuff. Exactly. Yeah, right. right. Um, but I'm saying that's something that you could put out also for people. Like if, if I saw your request for copy editors, I would not volunteer because I don't think I'm qualified. Right. And, so and, maybe and, you could off, offer for copy editors and for carpety, copy editor apprentices or something. Right. Just, you know, we might, we might get some nice green people who would jump in. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Not. Okay. All right. So I will, so let's, let's put, I, and I don't think Diraj is here. So let's put the two mark to propose um, the addition to the Jenkins developers list. And, and we'll see what the conversation goes there. And who is, there's somebody who, God, what's the guy's name? Um, he's, he edited a couple, he commented on a couple of mine, uh, that thing on the nodes and executors and stuff. Mm -hmm. Any chance that he would be interested if you actually specifically asked him? I uh, don't know who it is. That's a good question. Let's oh, go look. Oh God, I, and you know the name. I'm just drawing a blank because my mind. Uh, not uh, Tim Jacom. I, I no. don't know. No. Um, so Daniel is commenting here. Um, find the one with the nodes and executors and all that. Oh, okay. All right. Let's look there. Okay. So nodes. Or go back to the, well, no, I've got a new one. Um, okay. Nodes. Ah, John, it's the very bottom of your screen. Don't scroll. Just go to the bottom. Or it just wait a minute. It went. No, it was there. Oh, I, I see. I see. It was, in, it's, it's been merged. Good. That's very good. This one. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Oh, Deepak. Deepak Gupta. Yes. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, well, so Deepak is not yet experienced enough with either writing processes or the Jenkins project, but he may be willing, he might be a good candidate to be mentored, just like, um, just like Diraj would probably fit the same, the same role. Right. So Deepak and Diraj um, all would be would be very good can both would be very good candidates. Um, another question just in general about, so the copy editing is done, like security, we have Daniel who owns it, but uh -huh. does anybody now like own say managing Jenkins and system administration? Does anybody own the pipeline? No, no, in the, just the copy editors in general. Okay. Um, yeah, and whether the, any of the technical people, I mean, that's what I'm finding. There's this huge problem is that the basic documentation here is just missing. Right, correct. And, you know, and there's so, so then it's coming back to the, it seems to me there's a problem with the process. I don't know what we do about it, but. Oh, cause we're missing the first layer of knowledge, like the being able to get the, what you should be writing about versus right. the tech, making sure what you're writing about is clear. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So is, is, is that a, structural question or a content placement for existing content question? Tell me more about it, Nick. I guess I'm thinking, I mean, what, well, working with Daniel and Valak on security works great. We can talk mm -hmm. about, I can look and say, I think we should do this and this and this, and they can say, yeah, this is a good idea. That's stupid. Which they, they say it more nicely than that. There's nobody like that for these other pieces. If Correct. I wanted to address the managing and Jenkins administration stuff, there's nobody to have that conversation, to officially have that conversation with. Um, if I wanted to hit the pipeline stuff, there's nobody to have that conversation with. And it would be nice if we had a technical person or two who was willing to sort of have that role. I don't know. Yeah, so, and I think it's, I think the answer is there, it's, it's us. So okay. Doc's office hours is the place where we discuss discuss the structure, and we can do it in the Gitter channel as well. So, so it kind of comes down to you and Kristen become the ownership for everything basic. Right. 
it, there's hours. worse people to have it, but it's a load on you guys on top of everything else. Well, it's it's the it, it continues to be the hey we don't have enough bodies and so we'll continue chasing for bodies. Yep. Uh, we could also consider using community.jenkins.io as a discussion spot, but for me, the off this office hours and the chat channels are pretty simple places to do it. Mm -hmm. So, so if you're okay with that, I'd propose let's make that that our our working plan. We just say yes as we have questions about what should be in the user user handbook and where. Let's go find find those answers ourselves here. Right. I'm perfectly happy with that. Just pointing out, you know. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. So I think we got closure on the copy editor's question. And then we've got this structural definition topic. Ready to go on to change log? Yep. Sure. Okay. okay. So this one is a little different. It's different in that what we're reviewing actually won't be visible tomorrow. Um, usually we review a change log and the next day it is released. Uh, the tomorrow there won't be a weekly release and the, the weekly release that would have happened tomorrow will happen Thursday and it will be a security release. A security release is intentionally only the preceding weekly and security fixes. So none of the changes that have happened since last Tuesday's release are actually going to be included in the next weekly release. Daniel does that, the security team does that so that it gives the weekly a lower risk of having some major regression that was introduced in the preceding, during the preceding week's development and is commingled with security fixes. Right. So our, our review of this is, is proactive one week ahead of time. Okay. Great. All right. So let's is there a change a log for the security stuff then, or there, there, there is, but it's private. Okay. okay. That makes sense. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> right. It's it's yeah. It will be public when the security advisory is posted, so that the people who see it can read about what the security problem is that's being fixed. But people who shouldn't see it won't get it until then. Okay. All right. Okay, so uh, this is a major big deal. Congratulations to the organization. Thanks to Basil Crow. This thing is wonderful. Huh. All right, so what we see here is pull request 5707, upgrade Guava from 11.0.1 to latest, where latest is actually 30 or bigger. Mm -hmm. So this is a major version jump of this Google Guava library. And it's taken months and months to get this to that point. And wow. Basil has been just absolutely wonderful what he's done for us. The project is so, so fortunate to have him working on it. Okay, so let's look at that pull request. Because I think we wanna change the, oh, now that's interesting. Okay, it says Jenkins is, oh, oh, got it. This is very wide text. Okay. All right, so let's read it in place here in this. Jenkins has upgraded the Guava library from 1101, released in 2012, to 31.0.1 released in September of 2021. Plugins have already been prepared to support the new version of Guava. Be sure you upgrade all plugins before and after upgrading Jenkins. So for me, that actually is brilliantly well stated and upgrade guidelines will be included in the LTS that includes this that LTS is about four months away. Okay. So we're not going to get this very rapidly because we want time for it to soak in the weekly 
before we expose it to long-term support. Okay, here's the proposed guava or the proposed blog post. It's been reviewed by me and by Liam and Jesse and Tim Jacome as ready to go as soon as the release is posted. There are some minor changes to it. Do we assume when we tell them to upgrade all plugins that that includes restart Jenkins afterwards? Yeah, for me at least, that's certainly my assumption because anytime we tell them to upgrade, we've we've consistently said upgrade the plugins and not bothered with you'll need to you'll need to restart. And in fact, in this case, you actually don't have to restart. Oh, okay. Because what's going to happen, the sequence you'll use is you'll upgrade the plugins immediately before upgrading Jenkins. You'll then stop Jenkins upgrade Jenkins, start Jenkins, and open it up and upgrade your plugins again. Okay. And by doing that, um, you shouldn't have any intermediate restarts because you've done the, the restarts by doing a hard stop. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Okay. I'll shut up. No, great, great question. And looking at the other changes, they actually, I think they're correct to not be listed. This one will need, we'll have to convert it to use the, and have these be references, but mm -hmm. that means we've got the URLs. So we know how, what the URLs should be. And that's, it's just the nature of the tool that it doesn't know how to convert those to references. Yeah. Cool. Okay, that's easy. Great. So that was, that's, and I think this one has already been marked as, no, I'm going to, I'm going to mark it as approved. Okay. Approved, knowing that the change log approved, but do not merge because this will become the content of the, now how do we safeguard this? Yeah, the, <clears throat> the only people who can merge are people who read these comments, so that's fine. Content of the 2.320 change log. The 2.319 change log is a security release. No changes except security changes. It's, Okay. All right, so 2.319 change log done. Any any other concerns can, there? Can we go back and look at the, the raw stuff you were looking at for that? I saw something that's either a term I don't know or it's a typo. Okay, well, let's see. So you wanna look at the, at the text yeah. here? Okay. Yeah, 5853 50. is a weightility uh, an actual word that I've never heard. It's a library name. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. And that's that's why it's a comment here. So okay. yes, there's a library that was upgraded. No users don't actually need to be told that we upgraded that library. Okay. Okay. Cool. Forward. All right. Okay. Onward then. So next piece, I, I drafted uh, the. Hacktoberfest blog post last night hasn't been reviewed yet. Here's how it looks when rendered at one of the screen sizes. And Meg, your feedback has been incorporated. Thanks very much. Okay, so um, the video is now there. I can look at that. I'll look at that yeah, screen. so this, this thing is working for me just fine. Oh. I, I don't, I, I'm completely perplexed why it didn't work for you, but please try it. Okay. Okay. I will try again. Yeah. Actually, let's go on. When we're at the done of this, why don't you stop sharing and I'll share and try it again with everybody. Oh, ooh, that's a good idea. Okay, very But let's good. do the rest of the stuff on here first. Yeah, so, so I, now, one of the things that I was worried about, I did not include your improvements to the security docs. In I think Hacktoberfest. that's fine. 
I you're think okay with that? Yeah, because they're not complete. And because of Daniel's other obligations, I don't know when they will be. Okay, so so, so we're going to let them ride for now. Great. Yeah, I didn't okay. see it as part of Hacktoberfest. And so I'm happy. Okay. Any questions, any topics we need to discuss on security restructuring? Uh, no, just uh, there's, I'm, I'm just working on other little bits and pieces and Waddick has started reviewing some of those. Um, but everything is gonna have to be on hold until we get that huge PR that restructures everything merged. Great, and, okay. And I keep telling Daniel, take care of yourself first because he's over. Yeah, and, and that is correct. He's very, very busy getting ready for this security release on Thursday. There is no way we should disrupt him with this, with this, with documentation restructuring while he's working. More, on moreover, there is no way he should feel guilty if he keeps apologizing to me that I'm having to wait. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I thank you. You're, you're. That's exactly the right approach. Sometimes. People are so conscientious that they are harmful to themselves. Thank you. That's good. Yeah, that's why our best people burn themselves out. Let's stop that. Right. Okay, good. So ready to merge, ready to, to review when um, experts are available. Yeah. Good, excellent. Okay, so now I've got an opinion question and then I think we're ready to switch and have you share after we get this opinion question. So uh, Darren and I have completed the five video tutorials on adopting a plugin. And uh, it was, I, I kid you not, it was a lot of fun. We had so <laughs> much fun. It was just- You guys it, are, he is so good and you are the perfect addition. It's just- he, he, he is, he is absolutely marvelous and, and what a treat. And we're going to now embed those five videos into this tutorial on how to oh, adopt awesome. the plugin. So, so what we've got is we've got contributing to open source was a, a workshop that uh, CloudBees funded my development of it for DevOps world. And so now what we've got is a 21 page document outlining a whole bunch of small steps that any contributor can use to add, to improve a plugin. And with 1800 plugins and 110 plugins up for adoption, there are lots of places that people can help us make improvements. Whether or not they adopt the plugin, these are steps that will help. Right. And so the idea is each of these each of these subheadings here becomes a single page on Jenkins.io in a developer tutorial on improving plug a plugin. And so they'll have a series of 15 or 20 steps that they can take to improve a plugin. The idea then is now the question for the two of you is what style of navigation do we want as people are going through this. And I'm now gonna show you three different examples of, of navigation. So here's, here's how the, in the user handbook, we navigate by using these things along the top. Okay. So to go to the next, it, it handles it all for me. It remembers it. I just click and I go to the next thing. It's not always to me immediately obvious that that's big enough to tell me, oh, that's where I should click to go to the next. But that's how it's, this is how the navigation works. And as I go down the left column also. Also, right. And right. as I'm navigating, these things show in bold where I currently am. So, right. so for me, that, that has some attractiveness because it gives me a, some visual cues where I am. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's that's one alternative for for navigation for this adopt a plugin tutorial. Okay. Here's another alternative. This is how the plugin tutorial navigates. It uses a list of here are the steps that we're going to take, and then echoes those steps in the top of each page, like this. Okay. Okay, so that's that's an alternate. Now for me, this one is daunting because as a reminder, the list is much more than four steps. I was thinking that myself, yeah. And for me putting it at the top here, 
So with 20 steps here, that's going to be a serious distraction to the reader. Right. Okay, so that was, that was option two. And now I'm going to show you the third option. This is the one that I like least of all of them, but it's another option. And this one is, does not offer a, a top level table of contents, but each at the bottom of each page is a hyperlink that takes you to the next thing with a continue to this. Mm -hmm. And if the pages are short enough, the problem for me with this one is these, these contributing to open source steps, actually many of them are independent of each other. So I do not have to have completed all the steps prior in order to successfully complete one of the steps. Right. And so having a navigation model that requires that I navigate through every page just feels like, let's see where to go, this one. Uh, this thing really doesn't have a table of contents on the left I can use to navigate or right. any other way that I can navigate. Right. And yeah. that might be hard to go back to things that you wanted to read before again. Right, right. Yeah. Like the, the traversal backwards is also difficult. It's like, oh, there right. isn't a go back. I have to use right. my back button. And I can't see if I'm looking for one piece of information, I can't just glance and see where it is. That's right. a good point too. Yeah. Yep. So so back to the 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 first my first preference for the moment at least is to attempt to get this style of layout and have it be placed in the, now I gotta go to the right page to show where it will be placed because that's the other part of this is it's a little awkward to say, hey, we're gonna do it because this page does not really have a table of contents on the left. Oh. We could, we could restructure this. Maybe that's, now I hadn't thought of this, but maybe that's a better approach. Mm. Should, should the developer handbook just be structured like the user handbook. Yes. Maybe, yeah, because that, that way it's consistent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so now, now let's, let's test that by looking at some of the contents here. So the reference documentation, this I think of as a table of contents to the developer, to a developer handbook. And when I go to this one, hey, here's this nice, you know, ah, this, so this really does have a reasonable, sort of navigation model and might fit with the whole um, developer, what do you call it? The, the developer handbook say, okay, this is going to be the developer handbook and we're going to make it like this. Yes. So have it look like this one, user handbook. So we would have developer handbook and it would be a top level thing. Yes. Okay. All right, that's a that's a much much bigger thing, but I I think I like that. Any any objections to the idea of a developer handbook? None. Preference is to okay, and that may be something. Restructure the developer. Where what have we got here? We've got. Yeah, restructure the developer topics into a developer handbook uh, modeled after the user handbook with chapters, um, uh, underscore chapter dot YML definition and then sections for, and now the sections would be um, plugin tutorial, uh, adopt a plugin tutorial. Oh, I think it was create a plugin. And then the other topics were Reference document, oh, reference documentation, how-to guides. This is like a random 
comment. Would it be better to have those above, like if when we're ordering it, like above the oh, creative yes. plugin tutorial? Yeah. Yes, okay. yes, you're right. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. And maybe what we should do is how to guides first, right? The most yeah. highest frequency things first. Yeah, I look at it as like if we're rolling down through the <laughs> right your experience with Jenkins, like, all right, we're getting started. Here's some good reference. And then now yeah. you're getting now you're getting to the more advanced stuff here. Mm -hmm. You're taking over either you're creating your own plugin, you're taking over one. <laughs> yeah. In. Okay, good. Oops. Okay, so we answered we answered the question that I had on how to structure it. Uh, that's that's much more work, but it's something that Diraj and I may be able to make some progress on and work together. Just thinking about it, it's yeah, you know what? It would feel better if if the developer documentation had more of a navigation sense that the user handbook has. It just the developer worked. documentation, this is all about developing plugins, right? Well, it's all about development topics. And so I would say it's even more than plugins because there are things, for instance, in the how-to guides on how to do, how to do um, localization. How do you do uh. translation, right? Um, and so how do you do, how do you do, um, well, what's the architectural framework? How does it, how does Jenkins think about itself and these kind of pictures? Okay. And then I should turn this into too much work. I mean, the architecture would be really nice for system administrators too. Yes. And I think, I think that's an interesting idea that we might want to reuse this architecture diagram in some of the documentation and some of the user handbook, right? Because right. that thing, I, I confess, I reused it in a blog post because I think it's a thing of beauty. I oh, love it really what Angelique amazing. did with this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, put, put that everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Right. <laughs> exactly. It, it's, it, it is really a well-considered, well thoughtfully structured, and understandable introduction to, oh, wow, yes, here's where this goes and this goes. Yeah. So wholehearted agreement there. All right, so back to, so we've got model it after the user handbook. And now the question is how, yeah. So that's, that, that I think answered it, great. Any anything else so there? If I go to the Jenkins IO docs top, am uh -huh. I going to see the developer guide then? Uh, if you go to the if you go to the very root, what you have here is documentation developer guide. Okay. Okay, and we have documentation user guide. That is not a terribly attractive entry point. It really should. Oh, I know why because it, this thing really should open to this page. Right. Right, because truthfully, the, that page isn't even accessible any other way. And this thing doesn't help us that much. Uh, the, the whole structure is just a mess, you know? And given that we don't have the resources to do some of the basic stuff, it's like sort of need to look the other way, but. Right. Because what I'm thinking is, I'm a developer who's writing applications that are being built by Jenkins. And uh -huh. I go to the Jenkins docs and I see developer documentation. I think that's for me. Oh, oh, so you're, you're and worried. And it's going to that... take me a while before I figure out, oh, no, it really isn't, unless you want to up your game. Yeah, so I'm, that is a problem I'm not ready to solve yet. Nope. Uh, I, I think that's a, that's a, a much lower threat than some of the, the requests for, hey, give me more help about how to use pipeline. Give me, give me more examples of pipeline. So I'm, I'm less concerned about people who come here as a developer who's using Jenkins. There is see... a quick fix. Go back to where you just were that user page. Okay. Use guide. This one? Um, this? Right there. Those, the first section 
we take that material and flip it and make that the top when you open the developer documentation, at least immediately say, this is documentation for people who want to extend the functionality by, of Jenkins. Oh, oh, I see your point. Yeah, so that when they, so some, an introductory page like this mm -hmm. for the developer guide, which would say the developer guide is focused on people who are developing Jenkins, not developing other software using right. Jenkins as a tool. That almost says, it almost is there. It could be a little clearer, but. Right. So that's our, I mean, it's not a perfect solution, but at least if I open it, I'm quickly told this is not for you, go over there. Yeah, well, and, and here, as you said, here it is. If you want to extend Jenkins by developing your own stuff, read the developer documentation. Mm -hmm. Good, okay. All right, so this yeah. this feels like I think what we just did is we just described a Google Summer Season of Docs project. Ah, huh. because this this rework here is is significant rework to get things into a place where hey, it would it would navigate easier, etc., and where the the navigation of the user user documentation and of the developer documentation would be similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, I can already see that, look there, if we jumped there, if this link took us to user documentation home, that's probably a better choice, even though this link says user guide. Right. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. That covered all the topics I had. Meg, are you ready to for me to switch off screen share? You share your screen sure. and let's look at that video. Okay. Okay, I've stopped sharing my screen. Oh, hi, Diraj. Hi, Mark. How long have thanks. you been there? Yeah, thanks for being here. Sorry, we were just blissfully going along in conversation without paying any attention. Yeah, no problem. I'm just very sick. That's why. Oh, I'm oh, you poor. No. I'm so no. sorry to hear that. You do not have. It is. This is still the early hours of your morning. You do not have to be here if you're not feeling well, Diraj. I don't know. I was just missing the doc's office hours, so I just joined in, just to listen to all of you. Well, thank you. That's very kind of so, you. I'm sorry for the voice. It's just not that good to hear. Currently. Well, and. Okay. Since you're here, we've got a question for you from the earlier session. So let's, uh, Meg's going to test drive a video hyperlink for us here. And um, so you'll need to look at the content of the files view rather than this. Okay, so, I'm trying to think where I'd gotten the link. Yeah, so go to files changed and, and look for YouTube. There it is. No, there we, yeah, there you go. Pick that. So now you've got to cut it carefully. Perfect. Now, I don't know what open link in new tab is going. Oh, good. It did behave the way I hoped it would. Okay. So that looks, that is not what I did last night, though, that got me in trouble, but it may be just the nature of this thing is, where is it in here? Oh, okay. So uh -huh. when you, here it yeah, is. so if you, if you click. That this, was where I got in trouble. Right. And this thing that you, what you're, what you're, good. Okay. What you're seeing there for convenience for reviewers, I paste a picture of the blog post for reviewer convenience okay. so you see what it looks like on the page. But the links in there are definitely not clickable. There's no map there. And so okay. when you click it, all you get is the picture. Okay. Okay. A long, so. Okay. I failed to read your comment. That's I need to learn to read more carefully. <laughs> you say it right there. There's a long skinny picture of this blog post. I thought, I don't know where you'd ever get a long uh -huh. skinny picture of this blog post, but okay. Uh, what do I say that from the yeah from the preview image or preview the, the image blog or yeah something. right okay 
great. And you're talking in third person. It's like I'm dealing with my twins again. That's just delightful. Or Donald Trump, unfortunately. <laughs> no, wait a sec. Let's not get let's not get well, wild. He does, I mean, he does that, you know. Oh, okay. We we used to sit around uh, the dinner table and have to re lecture the children. Please stop talking about yourself in the third person. I need I need you to say I, right? Not not your name. <laughs> Okay. Good. Now, how do I resolve this? Wait a minute. Can Scroll down a little bit and you'll see. So it's not showing. Um, oh, it should. Be. That's interesting. So uh, don't worry about it. There's, there's no, maybe I don't no have issue. Priv maybe you have to resolve it. Yeah, I, it maybe may be. Maybe I, I, don't have I can certainly resolve, resolve it. it. Knowing that you've, knowing that you've reviewed it, that's good enough. Okay. So that does that. And, oh, and I'm. Great. So, and you can you can switch unless there's something else you need to share. You can switch no, that's off. That's what I am. Oh, there we go. Stop share. Yes. Okay, it's great. To get back to where I could stop sharing. So, Diraj, we had one question for you. Um, I'm going to share my screen again so that we can look at it together and use the notes. So, sure. right here, what we one of the topics we started with early was adding more copy editors for Jenkins.io. Um, what we've got right now is there are four of us who are copy editors, me, Tim Jacome, Oleg Nanashev, and Rick in China. And I'd like to propose additional copy editors. So what we proposed was, hey, Meg has agreed that she'll, she would like to be more involved in reviews, but is not yet ready to be a copy editor. But after a few months of mentoring, she may be ready to become a copy editor. And the reason for that few months of mentoring is to be sure that her reviews are comfortable, confident, that, that everyone agrees, oh yes, Meg would have proposed to merge this and we agree it should be merged. Uh, the question to you is, would you be willing to take that kind of a role as well where you would become a, a potential copy editor and after several months of mentoring, we would plan to promote you to become a copy editor? Uh, so that's an easy yes from my side. Uh, okay. It's a learning experience, and I would love to. Yes, thanks. Great. All right. Excellent. Okay. Great. So I will. I will use that. That makes it convenient because Doc's office mm -hmm. hours then can be a place where we discuss and go through that kind of mentoring. So that's that's really good as well then. Excellent. So All what right. should it be? So if I see something that I think you should check, do I just leave a comment that says I at Marky Wait? Yes. Yeah. Just at reference me, say hey, or even better, if you can just leave comments or or even go ahead and approve the pull request, because mm -hmm. as a reviewer, you can approve it. Um, your your approval is non-binding and it doesn't let you merge. But when you've put your approval on it, that says, hey, I think this is ready to merge. It's a good way for somebody else to realize they, they probably don't have to do the same level of detailed review because you've already done a detailed review. Okay. Okay, we'll do some, we'll see what comes up and we can discuss that here. Great, yeah. All right, and let's see, Diraj, you were here for the, I think you were here when we were discussing the the navigation choices for the plugin tutorial? Yes. Okay, good. Right. All right. So any any concerns from you on the idea that we switch the navigation for the for the developer components to, to be a new thing called the developer handbook? Uh, no objections from my side. Looks good. Okay, great. All right. Those are all the topics that I had. Any other topics we need to discuss today? So I think we already went through the change log, right? We, we did. It was relatively simple. And actually, it's probably a good one for us to do a, a review so that you're aware of why it's so simple. So okay. the 2.319 change log that we see online, this one, is actually not going to be used for the 2.319 release because the 2.319 release is a security release. It will only include 2.318 plus the security fix. So any other changes that have happened during the last week 
will not be included. Uh, that's intentional so that weekly users get something that if they were using the last weekly, the security fixes don't have additional complicating things like other changes that would that might be a major regression. So the, the, the thing that will actually happen is this thing that we looked at today as the changelog for 2.319 will actually first be visible to users as 2.320 one week from tomorrow or one week from today, your time. Okay. So the security release, uh, um, so the security fixes will be added by who? Uh, oh, good, good, good question. So the security team adds the security fixes in a private repository. Okay. The, the security team writes the change log. In a private repo. The security team writes the writes the uh, security advisory. Uh, the security team builds builds the uh, the, the war file privately, all right? And then on release day, they publish those things. So it's this, a security release is a very different thing because of the sensitive nature we don't want we don't want to disclose a vulnerability without having a fix ready when we disclose the vulnerability. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so do we have anything else to discuss? Because I do have one point. We, we do not. What, should, what, what point did you need to discuss? Yes, so I was thinking about the Linux Foundation uh, internship. So uh, as per my knowledge, it happens on demand basis. Like if there's anyone interested, that's when Jenkins team thinks about doing this internship. So what kind of topics do this internship goes for? Something like that. Your, your timing is marvelous for asking that. Thank you very much for asking because <laughs> I'm about you pay to him for that. Yeah, I really should pay you for that because I'm about <laughs> to propose some things to, to my, my employer proposing that we use Linux found one or more Linux Foundation funded internships uh, to <laughs> accomplish some very specific needs inside Jenkins. So, nice. uh -huh. so what we've got is Jenkins core has some outdated components that need to be updated or replaced. And and that's complicated, right? Because uh, for if we take an example, the guava upgrade that just arrived on the Jenkins on the Jenkins um, weekly release it will arrive next Tuesday 11.0.1 to 31. This was released in 2012 and this one is released in 2021. So we're doing a nine year jump with that component. And that's absolutely terrifying and a lot of work. Uh, we have other things like the next target is juice. After that, we've also got prototype.js that needs to be replaced. Yahoo UI, the, let's see, what are some other ancient components, et cetera. Uh, so, so those feel to me like good candidates for a Linux Foundation internship. The idea would be um, we fund a three-month internship for a 
for one or more interns doing the work mentored by experts from the Jenkins community where CloudBees pays the salary of the mentors. And I hope to persuade CloudBees to fund the outreachy uh, or the, the Linux Foundation internships. So, so that's one topic. And that's already a significant one. Then there is plugin modernization for key plugins. And this is see the, the workshop for the 10 or 15 steps that are needed in a number of plugins. So is this the same workshop that you and uh, Darren Pope were doing? It, it is, it's an, it's an evolution of that thing, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's the, Darren and I did the five part video series and what, what happened as we were creating that series, we mm -hmm. roughly added 50% more to it just by the act of creating it because we realized, oh, whoops, here's another thing that can be improved. Here's another thing that can be improved. And I'm confident that the rate of expansion of those topics has not slowed yet. So there are, there are more topics yet to be discovered. Um, things like uh, getting rid of Jota time, uh, using, uh, getting rid of JSR 305 annotations and using spot bugs instead. Those were things that we discovered, switching to API plugins instead of loading the API yourself in your plugin. Uh, those, those kinds of topics that are hiding behind them are probably still other things like that. Another one, have you heard of something called open search? Open search, I have not. Uh -uh. I may get, I think I just have a little bit, I won't tell you my source, but just got a little hint of it. Apparently Elastic Search and Kibana are going to no longer be under the Apache license. They're going to be a little more restricted and not okay. be open source. So Amazon has forked the code from the last Apache licensed version of Elasticsearch and Kibana and are apparently developing something called open search with that. Oh, no. So, and, and I'm not, not, not at all aware of that one. So that I don't know that we're using any of those components in Jenkins. So I'm not sure how we're we... not, but they're, well, I know it hits, I, you know, <laughs> Git grips. I, th I love the day you taught me about Git grip, by the way, it's, I just love it for everything. We do mention of uh, Elasticsearch and Kibana a lot of times gets mentioned for watching your logs is that you intersect with those. Oh, oh, right. Okay. So uh, observability kind of things. Right. And uh, okay. So, and it, it may be, but I guess the big question is whether we are going to support both Elasticsearch, Kibana and OpenSearch. And I don't well, know how far along OpenSearch is, if it's like if today I can use OpenSearch or if it's still a... Yeah, right. so oh, go oh, ahead. sorry, it's like I remember sorry. reading about this was like a massive drama inside of like the open source community stuff. Um, I would almost say that if we're going to do it, we should say all three, right? Because like people are still going to pay probably to have mm -hmm. their Elasticsearch stuff. So I'd want to make sure that we like we cover that from the perspective of and it may initially be sort of like LDAP and yeah, um, a, you know, that that they are essentially the same from the user yeah. standpoint, yeah. And whether they will eventually diverge, we can deal with that then. But right, right. Um, because yeah, I can so, imagine someone like Googling Elasticsearch, and we still mm -hmm. wanted to hit this. So <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So so the the I think the more immediate thing in that theme is a thing called open telemetry which allows observability of Jenkins pipelines and Jenkins operations inside um, Elastic or inside Dynatrace or inside other observability tools. And, and so, but that's, that's not open search. That's not the, that's not the fork, the hard fork that, that Amazon has done. This is a very different thing. This is 
much more cooperative and and the elastic people are actually actively working with the Jenkins project on open telemetry and presenting about it and sharing how it's working for them. Right. Okay, so we we've hit hit my time. Um, if you're okay with this this one, Diraj, let's let's plan that we have you and we'll do this include this topic in future office hours because I'm going to have a discussion really pretty quickly here with people about potential funding for several Linux Foundation internships uh, to do these kinds of these kinds of things. Sure. Should, you, should we put the restructuring of the development guide? Oh, oh yes, that's a well. Actually, that one's uh, that one. I would think is more of a Google Google season of docs. Right. That's that's funded by Google, but restructure the uh, developer topics into a, a developer handbook. So how do you differentiate like which one is for uh, Linux, which one is for Google season of docs? So is it because is it in Google season of doc because it is purely documentation project? Or yes, what? this this Google season of docs is well suited to things that are purely documentation and and maybe documentation structural as much as they are documentation content. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And what about what we did with she code africa last year is still you know for all the marvels of that project that work is still undone and i'm not sure that's really should be seen as much of a doc project it is more of a oh no thing. and that that one is not but it's a for me that one is a different that is a different scope the linux foundation internships have the benefits that they are three months right and um, at least when I read them, fifty-five hundred dollar compensation to the intern. So, so a reasonable compensation. Uh, she Code Africa is one month and five hundred dollars compensation. Right. I was I was just thinking that maybe it would be good if we were maintaining a list of these big things that need to be done. Oh, oh, right. That yes. we could then, when something comes up, you know, we could say, oh, you need a project for Google Sheets and Docs, and we could go through and look and say this and this would be appropriate. Right. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, good, good idea that we should, we absolutely should track those kind of things. And, and we've got pages like that for Google Summer of Code. So there's no reason we can't do something similar for Google Season of Docs. Put, put topics out there on the Jenkins.io site that say, hey, here's, Here's, let me find it because we may already actually have it. Documentation and now Google season of docs. There we go. Okay, status page. So here are project ideas that we've captured in the past and we can certainly um, put more there. All right, sorry, I've gone over by a long. Any other topics before we end for tonight? Get well, Diraj, I'm so sorry. Diraj, no, you're no feeling better. Are you seriously sick or just need time to recover? Um, I think I need time to recover and uh, we have Diwali in two days, so I need to get recovered ASAP. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> feeling better soon. <laughs> That's the plan, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, the great excuse now, I'm going to turn off the recording because now I'm going to ask a question that may be indelicate. Stop. Okay, stop the recording. <laughs>